welcome to my new video and welcome to my first tutorial on Gumroad. So today's tutorial will be creation process of a sci-fi planet that just looks like a Star Wars movie planet. So we'll try to recreate a image that looks like a real film production. I just want to say two things before we start the tutorial. The first one is that tutorial requires Blender EV, uh, so it means that you need Blender 2.8 or version that are above, but also that some techniques work with uh, the older version, but I think that everyone today has Blender 2.8, so it's not a real problem. The one point is that I'm really bad <laughs> in English. My English level is really, really poor. So I excuse myself, uh, Owen, uh, if you uh, don't understand what I'm trying to say. Uh, but just to know that I'm willing to practice, I'm, I really want to learn how to speak English properly. And that's any benevolent message. Uh, to help me improve my pronunciation, welcome. If it's a instructive feedback, I'm okay with it. There's absolutely problem, and I'll welcome it. So, thank you for your benevolence. All right. Uh, the first thing I want to show you before we start uh, diving into Blender is this texture. So, as Creation process for the 3D Blender planet will use a texture. So of course, this planet. Uh, so this texture was downloaded from the internet. It's a free planet texture uh, made by someone on Gumroad. So this one is only free texture I I found uh, for commercial and personal uses. But you will see that it's not because it's um, green brown that it is not possible to tweak the values, tweak the colors. But just to say that um, before starting this tutorial, you'll need to find a texture that looks like this. There's no need for high quality texture. Since you, you'll understand the process and you'll just have to build on better quality models, but that's really not the problem. First thing that for this tutorial, you'll need a plain texture that is rectangular. You, you'll find plenty of, of this uh, in the internet, Google image, everything. So, all right, so I'll put this one uh, into uh, the folder for, for the tutorial, as well as the blend file and uh, the final render. All right, so. Now that uh, I finished with the disclaimer, let's go into Blender. Right, now that we are in Blender, you've created your new file. Uh, just save it. So I already made a tutorial of this, but unfortunately, my record just failed. My computer crashed. Um, so I'll try to break each part of this tutorial into several videos. So the first part is modeling. Um, so in this part, I'll show you, you how to create the perfect model for the 3D planet. But as you guessed, it is not that easy just using a UV sphere. So first, press Shift and A to add a new model, then Mesh and UV sphere. As you can see, the model is really flat uh, because we have all the vertices and the faces that are not smoothed, moved. But just press the space bar, we have the research bar, then shade. And then you can see that whole model very nicely moved. But we still have these small edges from the sphere because it's not a perfect sphere, it's only, it's not perfectly round. 
and it's normal because the vertices is not uh, really dense. So to avoid having these flat edges, we can go into the modifier section, add a modifier, then add a subdivision surface modifier. And as you can see, the edge of our sphere is already um, moving. For the runner, I'll go for three because I think it's the best solution that are that is not useful um, for the processor and not for the render. And for the viewport, I'll keep the uh, one because my computer is not powerful and it just uh, takes so much from your CP. But in the viewport, you can see that third option really change things, but between the second one and third one, there's no big deal. So it's uh, up to you. You can set it to two or three. It's the same. Otherwise, you just can set it to uh, your preference depending on your PC specs. Right. And then I'll Set it to optimal display. Uh, that allows me to decrease the number of vertices when I zoom out or increase it when I zoom out. I think I messed up. It's decrease the number of vertices when I zoom out or increase it when I zoom in. So that's a really nice feature for low spec computer. All right. Uh, now that we have our perfectly made and it, I'll just add a circle. Where is it? Circle and resize it. Okay, this circle will be used for the second step, which is the lighting part. So the lighting part starts by adding some light to the scene. And we here we have four types. Um, but I'll only use two of them. So the first one is the sun light types that I will set above the model. And the second one is an area light that I'll set um, behind the model when I'm in front uh, with the sun lamp. So basically it will be under it. And I'll rotate it around the x-axis by 180 degrees so that it's facing the top or it's facing the up vector. Right. Let's go into the light properties. Um, I think I'll just disable uh, the area for, for the moment. Right. And if I go into EV render, I'll be able to change the video. So as we can see, when we change the height of the sunlight, nothing happens. So I'll set it to this size, but this is really normal. So for that, you just have to change the strength of light. What I want to aim for is a really nice gradient between the middle level of the planet and top level. So just increase strength this until you get something that is white. Right, so yeah, 4.5 is pretty good for this. And the specular value just allows you to uh, increase the size of the white reflective or disk on the model. So I'll just set it to 1.5. And then uh, I'll change the color. So to get warm or a color that is approaching the color of the sun when we're watching it from Earth. So stuff I put off that shiny orange. All right, let's save it. Back to the material view and 
default it's, we can see it and it's not the ev render that's easier for me and you can remove your part so now i'll just have to shift area a lot and we want the same but something that is really well blended with the tone of the planet for that increase the size oh wait increase the size like this and set it set the shape to a disk disable the shadows and tweak the height so you can get a really nice blend from it like this or just change it the value and reduce the distance from the plane we have a really nice planet yeah, to finish with the lighting part we've changed the color for and light and we've changed um, the size of the area light uh, bottom we can change the color value to change the intensity of the white reflective disk on the bottom part so just as the same for the sunlight i would set it to 0.5 right and now uh, because these lights can move freely i wanted to set them as light as circle for that i'll click on both lights and then on the circle so that the one that is active circle and i press ctrl p to parent the area light to the circle like this and when i rotate the circle you can see that the area light follows same process for the sunlight ctrl p object and i when i rotate it you can see that the light and the area are rotated around right great now the time for shading the shading part is a bit more complicated because we are going to texture this model for that we'll need this shading frame let's go into it change basic value so that match same as the viewport and disable uh, the wireframe for area light for these select your model rename it planet and create a new material move it on the right out editor and press shift a add an image texture it's i'm clicking by open but you can open texture for your planet and something i forgot to say in the first part is that the uv sphere when you add a uv sphere in blender it's automatically unwrapped so when i select it as you can see everything match the size of the planet so there's nothing for us to do and that's really really crushable all right back to the part so during this step we'll focus on the texturing of uh, the planet the second part of the shading or uh, texturing will be on the atmosphere that we want around uh, the model so let's take the color of this texture and set it to the base color then later to output we don't want sheen tint we will just tweak it uh, later uh, the roughness will be changed don't worry and of course we want some specular for this model so just let it to 0 0.5 just set it to something between 0 0.3 or and 0 0.5 that's basically what we use for a PBA material and for this all right next uh, thing we want to 
what is a Neachi curves dot y? Uh, simply because I want to change color of picture, not because I dislike it, but because I like warmer vectors, and I think they are sh they shows this uh, type of picture shows more information about texture, and I think they are much more interesting for a renderer. So I won't eat the combine for the moment, but I'll just green and blue what is called cool. oh, that's um anyway I I'll just review the the intensity of the green and the blue level to something lower and I'll keep the red one so as you can see already you have something much more orange like mass or and red I'll increase it a bit to improve the details just like this yeah you like this one maybe in the combine because I want it to be a bit more bright oh I don't really like this one Like this very nice so in the combine as i say I, I want it to be brighter i'll just improve like this yeah looks perfect now all right well i think we can even improve uh, the texture but i'll keep it for this later the second one you want to add is the u saturation value why simply because you can change color with it but because i already changed it with the rgb curves i'll keep the u value but the saturation i want it a bit brighter with a bit more contrast so yeah 1.1 is is okay and the value uh, because i want it to be brighter as well because i proved Rest. Oh, now we have a really nice with blue and orange. That's much more attractive. All right, uh, we finished with the base color, and now we can add some details to the model with a bump. The bump node is used to it utilize the details of the map texture create some details on the surface they put it from the normal to the normal of the PBR we can see that all of the small details from the texture are transformed as height difference but that that is too much for, for us so I'll decrease it to something really really low so that only the details appear on the middle of the so something 0 0.025 or 0 0.03 we don't need that that much 0 0.025 is really fine it's fine yeah no need for more and also we have this big island right at the bottom uh, which is a bit annoying so I'll add a color ramp, change the texture to it, and then change the roughness of the texture using this color ramp. And when change this value, we have the first reflectiveness. We can see that the, the island at the bottom is increasing as well as this part change still have them but modify their value so that it's not perfectly mirrored yeah looks perfect right 
because we're on the demon path, I'll just delete frame. Frame as is. Now we can focus on the atmospheric part. So the atmospheric part is harder but it's an interesting part for the model really important uh, because it will add a really nice effect with some settings we'll use later to render first add a diffuse node then add adder to rgb you can see we have the diffuse and when I put data to RGB, we have the same. So basically, it doesn't change anything. But it's really important to use the shader to RGB because we will be using the color of the model as color for the entire model. I'm not sure it's really understandable, but the diffuse is a shader that interacts with the lighting, whereas the color is just diffuse color so it's really related to the model and not what is uh, surrounding so such as the lighting even if we, we have this color after the shadow to rgb let's go uh, with a color ramp and try to change this value so that it blends a lot I won't change that that much. I'll keep this for that much difference, for example. Yeah. Cool. And then I'll add a mix RGB, and you will see why. If I add a Fresnel, which is an index of reflection, to the second bar, we can see some edges. Uh, appearing but when I change this value we have this small atmosphere that is starting to appear on, on and I found that the value of 1.25 pretty good with 1.15 but if you want you can decrease it and just improve the size of the but for me I'll just keep it to like this and don't forget to set it to multiply that's really important change the factor so that we have something that is fully black and white and you may need to change your index of section in but as you can see, this one is really nice. All right, and now we use a color ramp like this to change the factor of this. So if you want, you can set it to one, no need for a color ramp, or you can use this to reduce a bit the node, change the value, by by yourself to that. As you can see, you can tweak almost everything. All right, and then just go into an emission node and set the color to the string. Change the color to something you like, for example, blue for a blue atmosphere, this, or orange, or green, or blue. Depends on what you like. And no worries, if this doesn't change, we'll do it uh, later. For example, by tweaking this value so that. We only have 
a perfect address at the bottom or just by tweaking the value so that we have that looks more like a all right uh, i think i already forgot what value i had one that's good all right and then when you add the texture search for an, a notch adder and add the texture with the atmosphere you can frame it just as i did for previous one and call it yeah. all right and as you can see you have your planet with all atmosphere the two atmosphere the left of course you can change the color to the type of atmosphere but i really like this one because it looks like a fog or some really reminds me of uh, uh. all right now that the uh, shading part is done change the color of this node do because it's the color of the atmosphere and we can start by going for the rendering all right We finished the editing part. Let's head back to the video. Uh, because we've done the model, now we want an environment that looks like space. So go into the world and change the color to something black. Disable everything so that we can fully focus on the rendering settings and of course it's render button if you part shading so it's basically the TV render then set your render settings to something you like 32 because that's something I, I used to to use for for my computer no need for ambient occlusion, but something really important, which is bloom. And I found some settings, so I'll propose you to follow what I use. Um, for the threshold, uh, I keep 0.8. I think it's a good value. But for the new, I set it to something bigger, like 0.7. For the radius, I set it to lower because I don't want it to be too much over the planet. And for the color, I something warmer that remains the color of the light. And for the intensity, I decrease it, but the intensity and the radius works together. So if you reduce the intensity sometimes you want to improve the reduce and i keep the clamp value to one now no need for depth of field subsurface scattering no need as well but um oh yeah that's in volumetric you want to disable volumetric lighting and so the scene is in space no need for this no need for motion blur as well. You, there is no movement of object, so model is static. But we want to change the shadows to 256 and hit the soft shadows button. Why? Um, that's only to reduce work from the CPU. So. 256 pixel is there yeah, that's enough for our work there's no need for for more no air no direct lighting but you can go back them uh, but in this case just reduce the 
few map sizes and for the diffuse keep it to three dots that's basic uh the film on it because we are not using a transparent background and the color management i'm not a huge fan of this because you can still use it for compositing or in different match editing software such as photoshop I, that's just the pupil and the other freestyle there's no for it and basically at this point you finish but as you can see even if we have this really nice reflection we still have this part that is not completely black so i'll just set set it back again it's the where is the area light oh yeah got it change the distance from the sun See? maybe this one but i'll reduce the density to something five maybe that's too much one two yeah 24 is pretty Okay, so guys, here is the end of the tutorial, so I won't be long, but uh, just to say that you can disable everything. Um, I'm just rotating the camera, the angle of camera, so that the light is coming through the left of the planet. Um, I'm just doing this past commentary because I wanted to say that uh i was happy to release this tutorial it's my first one and to say that my english level is not <laughs> that really good but uh, i hope you enjoyed it if you have any question if you want to improve this tutorial if you have any id feel free to comment or send me a message um i, I think it's the best way to improve or level in blender and for me it's also the best way to improve uh, myself so thank you very much for watching these videos and i hope you enjoyed it so don't hesitate to ask me for new tutorials and i hope you will make some good planets as well see ya